If you've ever designed with hollow structural sections, then you've used the ASTM A500 specification. It's the standard spec most engineers are familiar with, and it's been used in a range of applications. But it was developed in the 70s, and a lot has changed since then. Manufacturing technologies and design codes have evolved, and we now know a lot more about how materials affect the way we design. As a result, a new spec has emerged that allows us to think differently about HSS. ASTM A1085. This spec has raised the performance level of HSS to meet the demanding needs of today's structures. It was specifically developed to perform in structures with seismic and fatigue loads. So what does A1085 have to offer? First and foremost, it's manufactured to tighter wall thickness tolerances. That means the full nominal wall thickness can be used to calculate the design properties of the cross-section, so you no longer need the .93 multiplier required by the AISC design code for A500 HSS. Think efficiency. Secondly, with A1085, all HSS shapes, round, square, and rectangular, have the same minimum yield stress of 50 KSI. However, unlike A500, there's a cap on the yield stress. Actual yield stress can't exceed 70 KSI. This control of the yield stress makes it more predictable, therefore reducing the overstrength factor, RY, required by the AISC seismic provisions. In addition, all A1085 HSS must meet a Sharpie V-notch requirement of 25 foot-pounds at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the same CVN requirement for fracture critical elements in the temperature zone 2 as listed in the Ashto M270. This means A1085 HSS meet the needs of bridge designers and provides the performance demanded by the design codes. Think predictability. A1085 can also help you reduce the total amount of steel in your design. For example, let's say you have an axial column load demand of 380 kips, an unbraced length of 15 feet, and you're constrained to using an 8-inch square column. HSS Option A has an axial capacity of 441 kips. Option B has an axial capacity of 343 kips. Both are A500. In this situation, you'd select Option A with a nominal weight of 48.85 PLF. However, Option C, the A1085 HSS, has an axial capacity of 390 kips. This would satisfy the load demand and have a lower nominal weight of 37.69 PLF. In this example, when you choose A1085 over A500 HSS, the weight savings is approximately 23%. Think material savings. Tight tolerances, minimum and maximum yield stress, Sharpie V-notch toughness built in, and weight savings. With all those features, just think what A1085 will mean for your designs. It's an excellent choice for structures that are subject to fatigue, including bridges, sign supports and transmission towers, and structures with seismic requirements, which includes about half of all buildings designed in the United States. The next time you design with HSS, think A1085, today's standard for building construction. It'll make your job easier. A wide variety of sizes are regularly produced by Atlas Tube, North America's leading HSS manufacturer. For educational resources, engineering support, and tips on getting the most out of HSS, visit atlastube.com.